Welcome in, Chad Brendel, Dave Simone, Camp Higher Ground. Just had lunch, taking a little easy out in the rocking chairs on the front porch. <laughs> this is what the guys get to do, right? Like after the rest of the day, just relax. Yeah, they just uh, they let us have them for a couple minutes so we could get a camp report in for you. It was Dave's first day out. We don't podcast until Thursday, so thought we'd get uh, Dave's Dave's impressions of his day here at Camp Higher Ground on a uh, little video. So, uh, Dave, anything that uh, that jumped off the page, anything that really stood out to you here in your uh, first trip to see the Bearcats this summer? Well, initially, I just it's just great to be back. Like, yeah. driving back out here, the whole atmosphere, you know, we didn't get to come out last year. It felt like forever, so it was just good to be back and feel like football is now officially, you know, right around the corner. Uh, I would say kind of based off of what you've been reporting the last few practices, I would give the, a pretty significant tip of the hat to the defense today. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of install. I feel like not as much 11-11, on 7-on-7 on seven is maybe what you had seen, but uh, you know, first first play out, Orquan Bush with an interception. A uh, couple of, still have some nice shot plays. Will Pauling had a real nice catch across the middle. Des hit Alec Pierce deep for a touchdown, uh, but uh, definitely a uh, defense day. I would give, give the nod to the Black Cats. A lot of pressure today, which t made Dave happy. Yes, there was a lot of pressure, and it, but that was also, I think, by design. Yeah, it was. They well, there were pressure packages. They were like, working that a lot, and you know, this perfect day for you to come out. That's right. You've been asking to see pressure. There was a lot of a lot, blitzing. A lot of blitzing. A lot of pressure. So it was good. It was, uh, you know, the offense still had their moments. I thought uh, Ethan Wright and Ryan Montgomery stood out to me. Both ran the ball real well. Chuck. Chuck. Chuck had, yeah, Chuck, you know, they got him in space on a swing pass. We made a nice catch and run. Uh, you know, got to the outside a couple times. He looks like he's, I don't want to say back to 100%. I have no idea. But... He was looking pretty good. Jerome Ford had a couple, couple nice totes, but you know the running back room definitely has some, some talent and some depth. I'm not sure we've had top to bottom, you know, in the last couple of years. Ethan Wright kind of has that different look to him. He does. Me. It's going to be, you know, he's one guy, and I've said it, and you know, we've we've talked about it. Will Pauling going to be tough to keep those two guys off the field, even though you've got really good players out in front of them, um, they're going to they're gonna have to figure out ways to to get them action. You know, Will had a real nice, what I would call a cross, you know, 15, 20 yards. He just, for a freshman, young guy, just very, very smooth in his routes, very smooth with his hands. He's not, you know, like stabbing at the ball, trying to catch it. It's just, it's very, very, very natural uh, with him. If Wilson Huber's on the field, they're blitzing. It's what it seemed like today. <laughs> they, were roll, they were roll, you know, kind of rolling that, rolling the guy up to the edge to make it more of a, a four-man front, and then somebody was kind of coming behind on one of those sides. It's definitely, definitely looks like they're using that bigger, bigger guy to come down as an edge player. We did get to see some punts today. That's the first time we've seen the rake uh, putting putting foot to ball here at camp. Right now, I think the biggest challenge for him is it's either got great hang time, but it's a little short, or it's it's long, but it's Line flat. Drive. Yeah. So he's gonna have to he's gonna have to work on some consistency in that regard. I think find that happy medium yeah. where you're you know. Again, that's where we got spoiled with Jimmy uh, because he came in 42 yards with great hang time almost every kick his freshman year. Yeah, and they worked some kickoff too, and I would just say uh, watch out for Tyler Scott next to Trey. Yeah, and also on offense, watch out for Tyler well, Scott. Yeah. But I mean, like I think where before it was Trey and yeah. Ryan, I think this year it'll be Trey and Tyler Scott. I mean, he granted it's it's not a full kickoff drill, but you know they did like kind of a segmented blocking section where it's kind of like two or three blockers yeah. against two or three cover guys, and he busted 
at least two that I saw, maybe more, where he just, good blocking, but I mean, he untouched. Let's start calling him Waffle House. What's that? Because he's always open. He's always open. The 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 Seven Eleven ones like overused, right? Yes. So we had to come up with something. Well, different. can we use Waffle House though? Because Julio Jones had Waffle House shoes yeah. in Titans camp. So maybe he, we'll localize it. We'd call he, it call him the Pepper Pod. Is he claiming that? See, we could call him Skyline if they would open twenty four hours. But they're which not. Is the thing to me that keeps them down in my rankings because it would be a it's a perfect twenty four hour place. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if it's a seven a.m. place. Yeah. It might be a 3 a.m. place. I don't know if it's a 7 right. a.m. place. Maybe not. Maybe not. You don't, Maybe like, they close you don't it. like Cody's at, at, on your way to work at typically, 7 a.m.? Typically, no. <laughs> I like to wait until about 10, 30, 11 before I'm in the Cody mood. Yeah. For uh, sure. For Evan sure. Prater. It's a big question. What would you think of Evan? I mean, he kind of backs up what you've been saying. He looks like a different player from the spring. Uh, several, several good throws. Was reading pressure I think well not trying to do too much he didn't really put it in I didn't have him with an interception today I'd have um, to check my notes I don't I, think I did either I don't remember him putting it into harm's way um, he's got some definite like I don't know speed wise com necessarily compared to Des he is very fast. shifty. Like fast. he his you know, he his quick change of direction is pretty impressive. Like in a in a setting where they're not gonna hit him and and whatnot, but there's there's definitely that there. Um, but yeah, throwing the ball. He had a couple nice ones over the middle, uh, where, you know, it's a big time timing route and he stepped into it and let it rip. So, you know, if he can keep building and building on that, I mean I heard Today, just really, really put the time in this summer, and you can tell, because from what I saw in April to today, I'm not going to say like totally different player, but big, big strides. Jake Renfro's out for a couple more days, probably. Precautionary, not a big deal. but uh, It better be. Precautionary. <laughs> there's, uh, there's not a lot of depth at center behind Jake no, right the, now. The snapping today was an issue, I think. That is at least some level of a contributing factor to the defense getting a lot, a lot of pressure. Just the snapping was not consistent. A lot of balls low. Some, Benny McConnell. Some high. Benny McConnell has moved for now while Renfro's recovering. Has moved to center. He is. He has a tendency to snap low. Gavin Gerhardt, who's with the twos, has a tendency to snap high. Not a great combo. No. Neither of them have a tendency to snap uh, directly to the quarterback. Yeah. Vinny was getting some extra work with Dez after practice. Yeah, and it's not Vinny's position. So right. I mean, you're, you're, you're asking a guy to slide over who, you know, the, I imagine, as being someone who's never snapped before, it's just a totally different feel because you're not, you know, you have a defensive player. Usually you're just concerned about the guy in front of you, not snapping and locating the guy, you know, because they're certainly not to the point where they can look up right. and feel comfortable snapping. So their head's down, trying to make sure the ball is delivered while also trying to make sure they don't get, you know, knocked back instantly. So def definite work in progress, but hopefully... Uh, Renfro's injury is a short-term one. The uh, a little bit of a surprise today. Not a surprise, but uh, interesting to see Kobe Bryant again. Another guy that should be back here in a couple days. Um, Justin Harris jumped up to the ones. Yeah, on the outside. On the the field spot opposite Ahmad Gardner, and uh, was interesting to see because it, like, we've talked about. Todd, uh, Todd Bumpus and Sammy Anderson have, yeah. have not had a great start. They've they've been victimized a little bit yep. on some of the stuff we've talked about, guys getting deep, and uh, I thought Justin Harris did a pretty good job. He did. Him. He should have had an interception uh, on a long fade route. I think to Michael Young went, you know, tough play, but went right went through his hands. I mean, a play that you would hope that he would make. Um, Bumpus had a nice play. Yeah. Defeating a block 
breaking up a, a quick wide receiver screen. Um, you know, he flashed there, but yeah, I mean, that's the thing we've talked about. Like, we have we've named these guys, but there is talent all over. And if there, if one or two guys isn't gonna step up, there's gonna be someone that, like I said, I'll take one of these four. Right. <laughs> In our, you know, kind of like our three breakout guys, like one of them is gonna jump up there and kind of get that spot. And yeah. today it was Justin Harris and. I don't think he did anything today that would remove him from staying in that place tomorrow. No, unless Kobe's back. Well, right. I mean, I mean, but like, you know what I mean. Like <laughs> no, he's, know. you know, he, he didn't. You know, he didn't. He stay. held his. He definitely held his own. Oh yeah. Anything else? I think so. The D line rotation is ridiculous. Yeah, the D line rotation is 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 a bit. It's a bear to say the least. And you were looking today at the the second team D line was. A combination of Jabari Taylor and Justin Watley at the three tech. Eric Phillips inside at nose, and then Jawan Briggs at the five tech on the other side. Yeah. And they were just wreaking havoc. Havoc. It's an embarrassment of riches, yeah. to say the least. Oh, uh, all right, well. I guess Coach Pickle doesn't want to join yeah, us. We, we invited him. You sure you don't want to join us? We're wrapping up now. You can give us some words of wisdom. Go quit your day job. This is my day job. <laughs> some people. All right, that's going to wrap it up. We'll, uh, we'll be back out tomorrow night. Practice is uh, Tuesday night and then day off Wednesday. So uh, we'll be back out. I'll be back out tomorrow night. Dave's going to be putting a little one to bed. I would have been back out Friday, but uh, apparently it's an, a closed practice it's a walk Friday, through. walk through, so. so this might be my Saturday stadium. scrimmage, Nippert Stadium, family stuff, noon, I might be able to figure out a way, noon, so Saturday, Nippert Stadium, we've, I got, think. we've got family, tell them family you'll be out stuff. for a couple hours, <laughs> all right, that's going to wrap it up, he's Dave Simone, I'm Chad Brendel, BearCutJournal.com.